Good morning, everyone. Happy Father's Day to all of you who are fathers. Or have and, one. Or have <laughs> one, yes. I know someone by that name. So if, well, today we celebrate Father's Day, obviously, and we look at our kids and we hope they grow up to be good ones. And we don't care about wealth, we don't care about money, we don't care about how many houses they have, we care about the character. So I'm going to start a petition on Facebook and YouTube, tell all my friends, both of them, that he doesn't need this car when we're done. He can give it to me. I keep telling him, material things don't count. So today, sign the petition, and today we start with the fluids, gas, brake fluid, press stone. And next week, hopefully, we can turn the magic key and crank her up. Have well, a good one. Well said. Happy Father's Day, everyone. Thank you. Um, and that goes for you, too. Um, <laughs> uh, so as Pop said, uh, we are prepping for firing the engine today. So wrapping up all the loose ends, get all the fluids in. Um, as Pop said, we are going to get everything ready to go, post the video today, Make sure everyone says, yep, you're good. You didn't forget something like oil. <laughs> um, and then we'll do the turning of the key or the whatever next week. Um, so we got a lot to do today, but hopefully it won't take too much time. So we're going to get busy, yeah? Have fun. Fun fest. Look at that. Yeah. That's for you, Wes. Yes. All right. So first thing we tried to do was remove... Where are you? There you are, down in the center there. The oil, I don't know what that's called. Front galley plug, auxiliary plug, I don't know what that thing is. Um, I was gonna use that to pressure fill the engine, but I can't get it out. Um, I'm putting probably, sheesh, I don't feel like 100 foot-pounds of torque and it's not moving and I don't wanna do any more than that. Break it, so. I put a post up on YouTube to see if anyone knows. Hopefully they'll answer that while we're working today. If not, we're screwed. Um, so we're moving on to other stuff. Um, someone had pointed out way, way, way back when I put the thermostat in that I didn't, may not have put the weep hole in the right place or whatever that thing's called, the little hole on the top, a little vent. Um, so I'm going to take the thermostat housing off again and make sure that's pointed up right. Um, we'll do that. Um, then we can button up all the, the fluid stuff up here and we can get the, the coolant in, if nothing else. Alrighty. Um, so we managed to get the thermostat clocked in the right place. Um, but I couldn't get this trim plate back on because I couldn't get that screw to bite for whatever reason. So, got to get a longer one of that. No biggie. Um, just decorative. Uh, so, what we're going to do, uh, this is Pops and I, it's our first LS, so we don't really know what we're doing here. So, we're doing you know, all the research and whatever. So, it seems like the proper way to do the antifreeze coolant on these guys is to pop open the steam valve, steam vent there. Fill it in from the top of the radiator hose in and let the engine fill up from the bottom up so all the air bubbles and everything come out of the, the steam vent. Um, then when we see fluid coming out of the steam vent, cover that up and then continue the fill and hopefully that's it. And I know there's some burping and stuff to go, but I think the engine needs to be running for that, so uh, we can't do that yet. But there's a damn fly in here. Um, let me make sure the radiator pet cock is closed first. Otherwise, we'll have coolant all over the floor. Want a bottom air? Than here, right? Yes. Yeah. So from the top down. Okay. Get your funnel. So this is the pre-mixed coolant. I didn't bother getting the uh, unmixed stuff because then I would just have to buy a bunch of distilled water. Oh, you press that thing. You're going the wrong way. What? You're going the wrong way. Just push it in. One time use only. Yes. All right. So I'll hold. Dad pours. Okay. Yep. And we'll see if there's any leaks. We're not entirely sure how much fluid. Oh, you're about to overflow. Slow down. Slow down. That seems like it's awfully slow. Yeah. Um, I was just saying we're not sure entirely how much fluid this thing's going to take, so that's going to take 10 years if it goes in at that rate. No leaks yet. Not there in the bottom yet? Nope. Yeah. 
this way, should we? Yeah, you'd think that stuff would just be chugging in there. Yeah, I know. That's what was holding it up. Air bubbles, maybe? I don't, know. I don't see any air bubbles coming back up. There was stale wool in the tailpipes, but uh, not paper towels in the hose. This is going to be a boring part of the video. We'll probably edit this part out here. There you go. Okay. Not even, was a gallon and a half? Yeah. About. Oh shit, I made a mess. Let's see if there's one down in there though. Okay, you can take your funnel out. Let's still got it in there. I know. slowly. The other two. How much did that one is left? Probably about that much. How much? How much? Uh, a beautiful, pristine car covered in fluids now. If you can see anything in there or not, but uh, the radiator was pretty much empty, uh, so it took about another gallon filling up the radiator. So now we've got it filled from the top and the bottom. A bunch of bubbles coming out this way, so let's we'll let it burp a little bit, and then we'll keep putting some fluid in here. Um, I do not have an overflow tank for this yet. Um, I'm still trying to find one that'll work with this car. I don't think the factory one will fit in here anymore. So if anyone has a good idea of a nice aftermarket bottle, please let me know. I haven't found one yet. Um, so we're going to do the power steering fluid next, um, and then I've got to go fill the rear end, and that, oh, one other, yeah, so a question for you guys, uh, hydraulic clutch, um, there's probably a little bit of, uh, brake fluid in the, uh, throw out bearing, um, when I put it in, I had to play with it a little bit, so it lost a little bit of fluid, um, does it need that for lubrication or is it internally lubricated? Because um, we have to do something, uh, I've got to do a little bit of work on that bleeder screw and so I don't want to put the fluid in right now. So uh, can we run the engine without that in there? Anybody that knows, uh, let me know. Thank you. Here's the cap lug on that. Didn't spill anything. It's a pro. I'll tell you when I see it coming up. I can see the level there. Oh, you can see it? That's it, stop. Yeah, we've got a. Once we fire the engine, <clears throat> turn the wheels, it'll get all the air out of the right. steering box and that level will drop. So that's probably good for now. Okay. Okay. All right, we managed to get this guy out. Um, I got a comment from Kenneth. Thanks, buddy. Um, I don't know if the heat helped or not. Maybe we put some heat on it with the heat gun. I didn't want to put a blowtorch or anything on it. Um, you can see it does have some kind of thread sealant on it, though or Loctite or something. Uh, I just got the half inch drive socket out and just went for it and it came out. So Pops and I were really worried about breaking this because that'd be a really crappy way to have a day, Father's Day. Anyway, we got this out. So here's the plan. Um, so we got this guy. Um, I don't remember the dimensions, all of these things. I'll look it up and put it in the video. Um, so this will go in where that guy came out. 
And then we got a hose fitting here to go into this guy. And then we got this pressure filler off Amazon. And I'll put the part numbers and stuff in the description for the video. Um, so we fill this guy up with oil, then you pressurize it with compressed air and force the oil into the engine through, this is basically goes right into the oil pump area. Um, and then we'll force the oil through the engine that way and hopefully that will get it nice and primed. All right, we got everything ready to go there. Compressor's charged up. So we'll put a quart of oil or something in this guy here. Uh, it's connected to that input port on the engine. Um, we're gonna go slow with it. And I'm going to watch the oil intake, the, the proper oil pour, spout, in, you know, thing, fillers. And look, you can just see the rocker there and the top of the head. So I'll look for oil up there to tell me that oil is getting up there. Yeah? Yep. Okay. Do it. You hold out like this. You want this to fill up first? Yep. Okay. Don't spill. I'll let that go. Mobile one. I went back and forth on this, people saying you need break-in oil. GM does not say you need break-in oil, so I'm just using mobile one. There you are. Thank you. Okay. And we'll just gently... Got a leaky connector on it here. There goes the oil. There's a leak right there. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah. Get this guy reaching his work. Pretty cool. No oil coming out the bottom of the car. Don't say anything. Oh, going out fast. Whoa. Wow. Hey, don't push it that far. Oh, shit. Oh. Oh. All right. I'll give everyone one guess as to what that sound you heard was. We forgot to put the oil filter on, so we just want one quart here to one quart on the floor. <laughs> Fresh oil smells so good. From the top to the bottom. Uh, I got to clean the other half of that. I can't reach it. Uh, anyway, we got an oil filter in there now, so that'll probably work better. Um, so we're probably going to be a little low on oil here, but hopefully we can still get the system pressurized and everything, and it'll be fine. So, as I told Pops, all you can do is laugh. That's all I can do. Look, have fun. Have fun. So we're having fun watching all our. <laughs> <laughs> Mobile one at like what is it? We had three negatives so far, three positive. Now back to four negatives and three. It'll all work. We solved one of the three thanks to one of your people. Thank that's you. Right. Kenneth, was it? Kenneth, that's right. Yeah, thanks, Kenneth. K T. But for Kenneth, this wouldn't happen. You know, I got to look at the other way. Yeah, Kenneth, why didn't you text? <laughs> Te Kenneth should have texted me in advance saying, "Hey, don't forget to put the oil filter in." All right, let's get back to work. All right, it's been a kind of long day of small little things. Um, engine mount bolts weren't down. What else did we do while we were under there? I don't know, cleaning up oil spills. Um, I told Pops that I was supposed to put the oil pressure sender for this box in that port that we took out, and I forgot to do that, so we have to go back and do that. Um, but anyway, we're going to test this now. I hooked the fuel pump up to the ECM, or the fuel pump circuit, so I disconnected it from the painless circuit that wasn't working before, and I disconnected it to the check engine light here. So. If the ECM turns on, this light should turn on uh, for a couple of seconds, most people say. Um, and then I have the fuel switch here hooked up to the actual fuel pump so we can tap that real quick and hear if the fuel pump spins. Um, that's it. So we're going to put power on it and hopefully nothing goes up in smoke. Let me double check that there's no shorts again before I do that. Check. Power to ground here. Oh, I don't have the power hooked up. I should probably fix that. Hang on. Okay. So we saw 12 ohms, and that kind of frightened me for a minute. I remember there's a bulb inside that thing, so that's about right. 12 watts. Um, so we're going to hook it up to the battery, and hopefully nothing blows up. Right? Right. No 
Those sparks there. Ignition, red light on. Red light came on? Yeah. Huh? Well, that red light. Yeah. Something is making noises in there. Here? Yeah. What's going Look on? Look for the back. Though. All right, so we see our little uh -huh. BD2 is running. You see that in the video? Here. There you go. All right, so if I hit the ignition switch, this guy should turn on. You should hear the relays click. Uh huh. No fuel pump light. It didn't work right. Should have clicked back off. Properly. This light's on over here, which means the check engine light is on. I was hearing the relays click when I did this yeah, before. Yeah, the first two times it clicked. But I don't hear them clicking now. The story is there. All right, we'll hear if the fuel pump does anything. Nope. Hmm. Nope, it's not right there. That's not working like it did last time. Battery's dead. I don't know, maybe. It's dead. It's not doing what it should. I haven't used the battery, so I wouldn't figure it would be dead. Fuel pump's not going to work. We don't have it hooked up yet. Okay, I don't know what's going on with the, the relay. What do you have to say for yourself? Darn hot, challenging day. Yes. It's Father's Day. Hug your kids, hug your wife. Yes. Other than that, we're going to meet all these challenges. They're tough, but more than we thought just today. Yeah, no kidding. So, I don't know what's going on with that box. It's not working today. Um, something has changed in here and I don't know what so I'm gonna have to go through all of this and try and figure out if I messed something up since last time um, I don't know it's not behaving correctly uh, like I said it's acting like the battery's dead but it's not so I don't know what's the story there but we'll come back to it next week um, so if uh, we can get that sorted out um, this thing should be ready to fire next week. All we gotta do is put, uh, hook up the fuel pump, put some gas in it, test the fuel pump, make sure it doesn't leak, make sure all the lines are connected before we do that. Yeah, we're good. And then we'll see. So uh, let us know anybody if you saw anything that uh, 
you would like to do differently. Um, when we primed the engine with the oil, we never saw the oil come up into the, the rockers there, um, but we did put uh, four quarts in it. Um, so order some more oil, let's pour it in from the top, um, and we'll just spin the engine over and see if we can get the oil pressure gauge to light up. I don't know what else to do with it at this point, so. Uh, yeah, so that's gonna do it. All right. Cromadina born. What? Hug your kids. Okay. Take care, everybody.